Jeremiah 23, we left off in verse 23. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord? Not a God far, a far off. And that's what Israel thought. That's what America thinks. They think that, you know, if I can't see God, I can't feel God, then there's no God. And the church is quite opposite. When they've got the world, they think they it's God. And God is far off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? No. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the good and the evil and the good. Saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Uh, this is that one that teaches, you know, well, I can go out in the woods and worship God. I can go out in a boat because God's everywhere. He's everywhere. But we're not told to go out everywhere and worship God. And that's one of the things in Jeremiah's time, the Old Testament, they were going to the high places worshiping the gods. And they had their, their altars that were dedicated to gods. And they had their queen of, of heaven. And they had all kinds of gods in worship, but they were not worshiping the God, the God. And that's a big difference. And a lot of times when people say, well, I can go out in the woods, I can, you're not worshiping God, you're making an excuse. Because whether you're hunting or fishing, I guarantee you don't thank God for everything you've caught. I don't think you pray to God every time you, you're about to pull that trigger. And I don't mean, oh God, please let me hit the deer. I, I ain't talking about that kind of prayer. When you've got the Native Americans in America before the Europeans come, and, and they take down a buffalo, they take down an elk or a deer, they would thank you, they would say thank you to the Holy Righteous Father. Or the great white God. I mean, they would give God honor to a supreme being. Americans don't that don't do that. The church people don't do that. Christians don't do that today. I have heard what the prophets say. And the prophets lie. They, I've heard what the prophets say that prophesied lies in my name. Okay, let's bring it to the church age today. All the times that people have dated the rapture and failed. Well, Jesus is coming back on... And he never came back. Listen, that's the heresy of three or four times that Jehovah witnessed. Jesus was going to come back. Jesus was going to come back. 88 reasons why Jesus was coming in 88. And I've seen those prophecies. And I've heard the name. And that did not happen. Jesus did not come. That's a lie. Saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. I know one particular man of the civil rights. I have dreamed. I dreamed the dream. And the insurance companies had to walk, open up their wallets and pay out his dream. A big unlawful event has been happening ever since. I had a dream. I had a dream. Unlawful. Wicked. Vile. They broke the law. And insurance companies had to pay for it. Windows were broken. Fires were set. I have a dream. I have a dream. Ridiculous. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? And I, I met some of those prophets. I heard some of those prophets. One in mind comes to when Jesus Christ comes back, the blood that's in his garment is his own blood. You're a liar. You're a fool. I've heard from pulpit, one pulpit, got up there and quote, and you know, where the Bible says, in, in my house are many mansions, and they quote something besides mansion. That's a lie. It's a mansion. Yeah, they, they are prophets of deceit, of their own heart. And we talked about that last night. There are men in the pulpits and women in the pulpits. Number one, read women. I mean, right there should be something wrong. There are men out of pulpits of their own being, not even of the devil. And of the devil, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 
and it's their heart is for deceit and they prophesy and they teach lies in the Greek. They teach lies. Another famous lie, you know, is well, that's what that's what men told me. That's what I learned from other men. What's the Bible say? I don't care what man you learned it from, the Bible says something else. You are the liar, and the man that taught you was a liar. Oh, don't talk about them like that. Don't you talk about my pastor like that. Don't you talk about my ed educator like that. Don't you talk about that scholar like that. I mean, okay. you're making fun of John R. Rice and the sword of the Lord. You mean John R. Rice, who had perverted Bibles? And you got his paper in a King James Bible believing church? Which think to cause my people, Israel, Judah, and Christians today, to forget the name of their dream, forget my name by their dreams. How do they forget the name of God today? Well, instead they worship arrows. They worship Death Star. They worship Haman. They worship another Jesus. They have a Jesus in the pulpit and Jesus in their church. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. I'll give you another one. The Jesus that had three wise men came at his birth. That's not Bible. That's another Jesus. What's the Bible say? The Bible says they were, he was about two or three years old when the, when the mad guy came. We don't know how many showed up. Well, there were three kids. Maybe there were four mad guys and one guy was too cheap to give gifts. Which... They tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. And there are churches that, they don't teach God, they teach Mary. They don't teach God, they teach Maloni. They don't teach God, they teach Allah. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell the dream. He that has my word, let him. Him speak my word faithfully. And there are many in the churches today, Baptist churches, they got the word, they got the King James Bible, and they are not speaking the word of God faithfully. Well, on this passage right here, you know, in the Greek renders, you know, it would be better, you know, better rendering to the scholars think, the scholars believe, but it really shouldn't be in there. That's not faithfully preaching the Word of God. Failure to rightly divide the Word of truth. What is the chaff, the weak part, the nothing, the, the, the waste to the wheat? What is the chaff? It's nothing. That's the prophet that has the dream. The wheat is the Word of God saith the Lord. Let them both speak. Let them both declare. And then you check them out. Study. It's not my word like a fire. The Bible says the word of God is a sword. Saith the Lord. Like a hammer that breaketh, breaketh a rock in pieces. The fire will burn. The hammer will smash. And no sword will slice. And heaven and earth will pass away, and the word of God will, will not pass away. And all the dreams and all the false prophecies and all the lying word will be cast off into burning hell. Forever. And if that false prophet, that false preacher, that false teacher, that false pastor, that false Sunday school teacher, whoever it is, whether, if they're lost, They'll end up in the, in the lake of fire to burn forever. If they're saved, they'll end up in heaven with no rewards at all. No crowns. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets. Plural. Saith the Lord. Now notice all the time, saith the Lord, saith the Lord, saith the Lord. That steal my words, every one from his neighbor. You got that? All right, I'm a, we got a King James Bible. You're stealing the Word of God. You're a thief. Because you don't rightly and properly use the Word of God, the King James Bible. 
There are King James Bibles right there out in the market. And when you check the verses, they're not King James Bibles. They lied to you. When you go to the store and see a King James Bible, you got to check certain scriptures to make sure it's an actual King James Bible and it's not been perverted. Ready? Behold, I'm against the prophets. Plural. Say of the Lord that use their tongues and say, He saith. Thus saith the Lord. And God never said it. When you quote the perverted Bible, you quote the modern Bible, thus saith the Lord. That's not what God said. God gave us one infallible word. It's the King James Bible. Anything else is not valuable. It's a lie. And when you quote that for the service of God, you're quoting a lie. Another thing. He gets up to, okay, open your Bible. The Lord led me to have this message today. Yeah, pff, on you. I've heard that. The Lord had me lead this. And that, that message was the very same message from last year. I guess the Lord does reruns. You need to turn off the TV. And there are people get up in the pulpit, thus saith the Lord, the Lord led me. I think this message from the Lord. No, it's not. I had a preacher one time I sat under. And my wife would get, would get, would get at me. We would have revival meetings. And it would be a great I mean, the Holy Spirit would come in and work. And this preacher would get up there. I call him Firewater. Because he would get up there and he would have to critique the whole message and, and how good the, and make the message much better by his words. I'm like, you just blew the whole service. You watered the Holy Spirit down. Shut up. Behold, I am against them that prophesied false dreams. All your tarot card readers, all your, 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 you know, your Hollywood mainframe, uh, what do you call it, fortune tellers. All your religions. Jehovah Witnesses built the house for Abraham and Isaac and all that. So when they return, they never return. So who got the house? The people who were the Jehovah Witness hierarchy. Where are the golden plates? Why are they locked up somewhere? And, and that could also be your, your politics too, you know. Well, if you vote for me, I'll make this happen. I'll have this happen. I'll do this and I do that. And they get voted in office and they don't do one thing they said they were going to do. They're liars. Say it the Lord. And do tell them. And do tell them. I like that. But that's the prophets telling their lies. They can't shut up. And cause my people to err by their lies. Can you imagine what the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment will be like when all the liars will be? Exposed. Saved and law. Yeah, just because you're saved doesn't mean you don't lie. I lie. We all lie. Well, hopefully I have not caused people to err by the lies. There are pulpits with men behind those pulpits. And when they open up their mouth, they are lying to the congregation. And the congregation just enjoys it. And the congregation is getting earned. Again, just recently with 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 uh, Easter and Christmas, I got shot down like the measurements in World War Two, and and the lies that stand still, and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not. That's God saying it. I didn't send them. God called me into this ministry. I feel when God called me, uh, maybe not. You know, just because a guy gets up to, uh, you know, God called me into this ministry, and I think when God called me, I was going to say, 
You don't know what's behind the scenes. You don't know if it's true or not. Nor commanded them. God laid on my heart for this message. God laid on my heart this church that, you know, we ought to. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. We're rich. God said, no, you're poor. We're a great church. No, you're miserable, naked. We have great. We have a great calling for our church. God said, no. And when this people, or the prophet, or the priest, the priests are involved, shall ask thee. That's the paragraph. Here we go. What is the burden of the Lord? He said, oh, what is the burden of the Lord? What is the burden of the Lord? That's a good question. But they're asking what the burden, you know, rebukefully, scornfully. It'd be like when I when I approach the farmer's market and if I'm setting up, it's gonna be what's he gonna say about hell today? What's he gonna say about Jesus? What's he going to yell at us today about? That's the same. That's the same attitude. And what the, what it is, the burden is. You see, Jeremiah has been preaching doom and gloom, unless they get right, unless they repent. And so the burden, of the Lord, is is the doom and gloom. Come on, Jeremiah. What what does God tell you is going to happen with our destruction? What's going to happen with the northern army coming? They don't believe it. And the real burden of the people is not the Lord. Jeremiah, just shut up. We don't want to hear it. We don't want the truth. There's a prophet, one of the minor prophets. Listen, don't preach in Bethel. That's the house. Of, go somewhere else, will you? Thou shalt say unto them, What bird? Good God, what bird? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. See, God's sarcastic. I had someone tell me sarcastic was a sin. Jeremiah, what's the burden of the Lord today? Jeremiah, I want you to answer. Yeah, what do you want me to answer? What burden? God's attitude is, hey, you're not going to hear it anyway. So why you ask? I mean, that's like how they asked Jesus questions, but they didn't want to know the answers. As for the prophet and the priest and the people, they shall say, the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. It's an outright rejection of the judgment of Jeremiah. And so it'd be like, and I don't preach on the streets, like COVID-19, the judgment of God, the, 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 this extreme heat in the West Coast, this judgment of God. I preach heaven, hell, Jesus is the way. I preach against religion. I heard the other day that the scientists know why there is a big heat wave out, out in the West. Uh, they don't know nothing. They don't even know about the common cold. They don't even know about gravity. So I won't even pay attention to look at But let's say, well, let's say I did say COVID-19. Sometimes I'll say something. But that's pretty not, not my ministry. My ministry is purely the gospel. So let's say I did say something about COVID-19. And... Well, there's another strand, a, a deadlier strand of COVID-19. I forget what the name of it is now. So if I were to approach Saturday and start setting up, well, what's he going to say about this new strand? Is it of God? Is he going to tell us that the West Coast and California is on fire like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? And it is a ranking. It's a scorning. Of the word of God. Now listen, I could preach about COVID-19 and the fires and the, and the heat and all. 
and be right by the word of God. Because it is the judgment of God. And the people's reaction was, well, what doom and gloom is he going to preach today? And God says, I'll, I'll, I'll go after you in your house. Thus shall ye say to everyone his neighbor, everyone his brother. Now this is all Jewish. This is all Judah. What has the Lord answered? And what has the Lord spoken? They don't really want to know. And what we've read so far in Jeremiah proves it. They're just like, and I've had, I've had it in my lifetime. As people know I'm Christian, people are going, what says the Lord today? What did the Lord speak to you today? You know, it's, and then they walk on by. They, they were not waiting for an answer. And they did that with Jesus. Now, somebody comes up to you and they want to know and they listen. Okay, that's that's an inquiry. They're not inquiring. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. Oh, they're going to keep saying it. Until they're dead. For every man's word shall be his burden. And you will be judged. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. For ye have perverted the words of the living God. NIV, RSV, Good News, New King James, American Standard. All the modern Bibles that come out of Alexandria, Egypt. Of West Carton Horse. You have perverted the words of the living God. They were perverting the words of God. Paul writes one of the churches. They were perverting the word of God in Paul's time. And they are perverting the word of God. I can only imagine somebody today sitting down to write a Bible about the Sodomites. There's someone writing a Bible about for the black people. Thou shalt say to the prophet. What hath the Lord answered thee? You know, you know, it's so funny. I heard in the last church I was in before we left. Well, there's no prophets today. Well, what do you call me and everybody who tells lost people, unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't be saved. When you die without Jesus Christ, you're going to go to a place called hell. What is that? I'm telling you your future, that if you don't want to go to hell, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What is that? You're not an apostle. They're gone. All right, you can be an evangelist. But I would assume that, that Philip spoke about the future of hell and heaven. He was an evangelist and a prophet. And there are false prophets today telling you what's going to happen tomorrow that will never happen. I guarantee there's people today preaching, well, Jesus is not coming. Don't listen to those Christians. He's not going to come. I guarantee it. That's a false prophet. Of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shall I say to the prophet. Now we've been talking about prophets, prophets, prophets. But there's also the prophet. You know, there's a false prophet coming under the Antichrist. In the tribulation period. Some believe it's Judas. Yea or nay. I'm not going to say yea or nay if it is or it's not. But there is a false prophet. That's why there's so many warnings in the law and by Jesus and by Peter about false prophets because the Jewish people are going to face the false prophet, the beast. You know, there, there's another beast besides the Antichrist, the beast. 
You better know what the word of God is since the false prophet is going to bring a false word of God. What has the Lord answered thee? What has the Lord spoken? But since ye say, walk up to the, to, what did God tell you? What has God spoken? He can't tell you because God doesn't speak to him. And if he does say anything, he's lying. Well, how do you know he's lying? Even the Old Testament, te check the scriptures. If they say, peace, 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 by the time we get to the end of Jeremiah, there is no peace, 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 lamentation. That man was a liar. Too bad you learned out too late. You know, a lot of people sit in churches today. The hardest thing they're going to realize is that their preacher, their pastor, their Sunday school teacher, and how they're going to learn not by the scriptures. How are they going to learn that that man was false, that man was a liar, that man was a wolf in sheep's clothing, is going to be when they stand as a judgment, and it's too late. And they lost everything and everything. Whether what they had they lost, or they never even gained nothing. Because they followed a liar. And the thing was, well, you know, it sounded good to me. You know. God's going to say, what did the Bible say? Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed at the judgment, rightly divine the word of truth. You know, that verse is taken out and has been misquoted and changed in every modern Bible but the King James Bible. The modern Bibles tell you, don't tell you, have nothing to do with studying the Word of God. If you don't want to study the Word of God if you've got a modern Bible, you'll find out the modern Bibles are wrong. And you're more in danger in a King James Bible believing church than, oh, yo, he sounded good. Uh, did your Bible say study? I don't know, did it? Did you read your Bible? No, I let him do it for us. There's your trouble. That's like a farmer saying uh, about his chickens. Well, honey, we're going to go to town. I found this nice, good wolf. And he's going to watch our chickens for us while we go into town. And he comes back after him and his wife into, well, where's all my chickens? You know... Oh, I know the wolf has got a big smile on his face. And we ain't got no chickens. Why? You didn't know that the wolf was dangerous for chickens? No. I'm supposed to know? Christians are stupid. <laughs> the proper name for Christians are called sheep. So, we don't know. But they say, but since ye say, the burden of the Lord again, told you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Jeremiah told you, don't say it. Thank it. It's the burden of the Lord, preacher. What are you going to say, Jeremiah? What's the doom and gloom, Jeremiah? What's God said to you, Jeremiah? And we're gonna we already read. No, we haven't read it yet, but we're gonna come up to the when Jeremiah is wearing the wooden yoke. And the and the preach and the, the priest or false prophet, either one, is gonna come up and smack him in the face. But which way did the Lord say? Which way did the Holy Spirit speak to you, Jeremiah? And he said, When you're hiding your bomb shelter. <laughs> So when we start reading Jeremiah and you start seeing people smack Jeremiah, put Jeremiah in prison, put Jeremiah in, in a hard time, remember, what's the burning on Jeremiah? And then when people come up to you, well, uh, you don't have a 100% ministry like we do? I got a Jeremiah ministry. 
and you're one of the people that's against Jeremiah. All kinds of people got saved. All kinds of people said a prayer. All kinds of people, they got saved, you know. We, 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 we saw a video the other day. Supposedly people stood before a church and got saved, and you don't see them anymore. Where are they? Now, I, I can't tell you about salvation, but I would think one of the, the signs, one of the works after salvation, you would continue to keep serving the Lord. Another one thing of those people standing there is when the pastor said, oh, these people trusted Jesus as their Savior. They did not say one word when the heart, with the heart man believes on the righteous, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. There's, there's a failure where you had them repeat a prayer and then you said they were saved. That's danger fire. Now, I don't know if it's so because I can't judge, but I, I pretty well think that's what it's so for many cases. Therefore, behold, I, God, even I, God, will utterly forget you. Now, remember we just read that the people have forgotten the name of God, they've forgotten God, God said, I'll forget you. That's someone going to hell. That is definitely somebody whose name is not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life at, the, at Revelation chapter 20. But Lord, didn't we prophesy your name? But Lord, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Look, there it is. I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. And I will forsake you. <laughs> there's an army coming. There's a there, there's a battle coming. There's destruction coming. I'm not going to I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to guide you. You're on your own. And then at the great white throne judgment, you're on your own. If they, one, of the, one of the worst things ever for God to say, depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you, and you're cast off in the lake of fire. The second worst thing is while you're living on this earth, God says, I'm done with you, shut up, I don't want to hear from you, and people don't pray for you. And we've already seen Jeremiah three times, don't, don't pray for him. When God, about somebody who is living, and he won't listen to him, and he won't listen to anybody else. And God says, "You're on your own. You in trouble." You know, I think that was a circumstance of Cain. God said, "A mark upon." Okay, anybody that killed Cain, and then Cain just went off. And the next time you hear about anybody calling upon God, it's um, self. And it's one of his sons. I think it's Genesis chapter 6. Then men became to call upon the name of the Lord. What about Cain and all his family? Where are they now? We know Cain is in hell. And the city, Jerusalem, and I, that I gave unto you and your fathers. And we've been through David and Joshua in the book of Judges. And cast you out of my presence. It's going to happen. That's the burden of the Lord. I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you. There's a burden. A perpetual shame. That's a burden. Which shall not be God. And we're still studying it today in 2021. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It will be forever written in heaven. Remarkable. 